I put out this poll early this morning to figure out what video I should make today. 40% of you wanted a video on ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo Fine Tuning for like a special specific task. So we are going to do that. And don't worry, I will cover the other topics too in a future video. But yeah, let's do some fine tuning. So when should you actually use fine tuning? So let's say you have a very specific task you want to complete. Then fine tuning might be something for you. You have a very specific requested format output you want to do every time. Uh, that is what we are going to look at today. Uh, you also, you have to have the data sets required to fine tune a model. So you kind of need to go and look at that. Uh, data sets are of course very important when it comes to fine tuning. Uh, so everything relies on how the quality of your data sets are, right? Uh, maybe you tried prompt engineering to get the desired outputs. Uh, without getting like consistently getting the results you want. Or like the prompt is huge. Let's say it's like many examples, the prompt is like maybe two, three thousand tokens, then you might consider fine-tuning it instead of using that, so you can save some tokens. Uh, so what we want to do is like, in this case, train ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo to try to outperform or be equal to at least GPT-4 on a specific task. And by doing that, we can get like more value out of running a fine-tuned model uh, by cheaper and saving tokens and stuff instead of just using like a foundation model like GPT-4. So today's example is going to be, we want a CSV format only response. That's an easy example to understand. And why fine tune ChatGPT Turbo on like a specific task? So this could be price, a fine tune ChatGPT 3.5 would still be cheaper than using like the new GPT-4 Turbo if you are on the API, right? Speed, uh, a fine tune model is much faster than a foundation model. And it's a better user experience if you put this into production, right? Every user wants quicker response. Uh, save tokens. Like I said, uh, you can shrink down the input uh, you put in like. If you have a lot of examples and stuff, a long prompt, you can fine tune on that to kind of shrink it. So we kind of only need to put in the essentials. I'm going to show you that. And of course, the output tokens, we can kind of fine tune it to just get what we want. And yeah, you get more control, and there's a whole lot of other stuff too. I might cover in a future video. Uh, so I think that's it. Uh, I think we're just going to head over to ChatGPT interface. I'm just going to show you what I meant uh, by, yeah, picking a task. Here you can see we are on ChatGPT 4. Uh, I put up just a simple text here. We have a year, we have an author, we have like a name of a book, and we have some information about it. And the uh, task I gave it here is think to the text carefully and list systematically in a CSV format the title, author, year of release, and genre, right? And we get the response based on the provided text. The CSV format uh, would be as follows. So we have this, right? And we have kind of what output we want here. The Alchemist, Poe Coelho, 1988. Allegorical fiction, okay? I don't know what that is. Uh, okay, so we follow up with a new text. We give a second example of a text. And you can see, we get kind of the same response here. Okay, that's good. So you can see GPT-4 clearly understands the task here. So let's go over to 3.5 here. Okay, so you can see we kind of do the same thing. We give it the text, we ask for it. The first time, yeah, perfect. That is the response, the kind of response we want, right? Uh, but then we feed like a second text here into chat GPT 3.5. And yeah, it starts off well, but then no, it kind of misses here. You can see it divides it into too many, uh, so we end up with like too many rows here, or columns. So yeah, that didn't work. So you can see clearly now that ChatGPT 4 is outperforming 3.5 as expected, right? So this is kind of the starting point we have now when we are going in and trying to fine tune 3.5 on some data from GPT 4 and try to equal out like the differences here by using fine tuning. So the next step then is to gonna start creating our data sets we kind of need for fine tuning. So for this I like to use just GPT-4 to create our synthetic data sets. In this case, if you already have a data sets, then you can just use that, right? Uh, but this saves us a lot of time to preparing the data set. So I've created this script you can see here to make it easy to create these synthetic data sets. So this is gonna be put on in like JSON, put out in like JSON L, and we can just slot it straight into like the fine tuning steps. 
So, like, if you're interested in the scripts, everything I'm gonna use today, you can find a link in the description below, and you can uh, support me by becoming a member, and you will get access to this GitHub where I'm gonna put up all the codes. I'm a bit behind on that now, but I'm gonna do it tomorrow, I think. So yeah, let's dive into this synthetic data creator I kind of uh, made here. So we're gonna start off by creating the text we need to solve this problem for our data set, right? So you can see your task is to create a text that can be used to complete the assignment. Here are some examples. So we give a few few shot examples here. So basically it's the text, the same as we use in ChatGPT4, right? Here's the same assignment. And here we kind of force the response we want. So we have the title, the author, the year of release, and the genre, right? Same in example two, exactly the same, but a different example. And we have the same here in example three. So we give three examples of what kind of response we want, right? And we finish off with create a similar text to the example above, just the text. So this is, yeah, just to get the text right. And that produces a random text each time we run this in a loop. And the next part is to create the answers. So you can see we have the exact same, uh, yeah, same kind of examples here. But at the end here we have, we're gonna feed in like, it's a placeholder for a new text we created. Your task is to complete the assignments in order. And think to is step by step CSV format. So when we uh, replace this placeholder here with a new text that we created in the first example here. So like you can think of it like uh, the response here. The new text is gonna be fed into this placeholder here. And we're gonna get a new response that hopefully is this, right? Just this. So that is how we create our data sets. So pretty simple setup. It's just like you gotta get your head around how we think about examples and stuff, but I think this is pretty straightforward. And when we have that complete, you can see here we kind of set this up in... Uh, again, you can see we use GPT-4 to run this. And it's pretty much set up. Here you can see kind of our placeholder, so we're gonna feed prob1 into that. And prob1, that is of course the first we look at, so this is gonna feed the text. and. We have a system prompt that is kind of your expert problem solver, think in a step-by-step -step way, use reasoning, chain of thought, common sense. I, I just left this as is. So, I don't know how should I explain this. Yes, everything gets like uh, appended into this schema.json-l file. And here you can see we can set how many examples we want to create. I thought for this video, uh, I'm only gonna create 30 examples, 30 data sets or examples of data sets in the JSON-L output. And we're gonna do some hand picking. So we're gonna go through each example and kind of pick out the best examples. So we're gonna remove the ones I don't like, so hopefully we can like clean up our data set and improve it that way too. So we get an even better result. So for now, I think we're just gonna run this script here and create our 30 data sets. And then we're gonna take a look at them before we do the fine tuning part. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this off now. Um, we're just gonna wait for our data sets to be complete. So this is gonna create 30 examples. Then we're gonna take a look at each and every one of them and remove the ones we don't like. So yeah, uh, see you soon. Okay, so that was it. Uh, that didn't take too long. Maybe like 3-4 minutes. Uh, so we can see we saved 30 examples. Uh, so let's open that JSONL file and yeah, start picking out uh, examples. Okay, so here you can kind of see the structure now uh, of our data set. So I would just want to take a closer look here. Uh, you can see here is kind of our input. This is our system prompt, right? And here you can see the text we created, so published in 1961, catch 22, so here is just an information about the book. So this goes all the way down here, right? And here you can see kind of the response, so we have catch 22, that's the title, author 61 and satirical fiction, perfect. 
So this is the outputs we are looking for. So you can see example 2 also has this uh, murder on the Orient Express, Agatha Christie, 34, mystery. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna go through this now and see if I found any examples that look bad and I'm gonna remove them. Okay, so I got all the way down to example 14 before I found this error. So you can see kind of the output here is, okay, we have the title, we have the author, we have the year of release and the genre. But in the genre part here, it kind of comes up with two things. So black comedy and anti-war. So this is wrong, right? So I'm just going to remove example 14, right? Like this. And yeah. Now we have cleaned up the data set a bit and I'm just going to continue going through this and see if we find any more errors. Okay, so I went over the data set. Uh, I found four errors I removed. So of the 30 we created, we ended up with, you can see here, 26 data sets. And that means we are kind of ready now to fine tune our model. So let's go over to that script and take a look at it. Okay, so this is the first part of the two scripts we need for this. The first part is to kind of upload the file we have created, the JSONL here. So we just put our file path here and we use this client create files and the purpose is fine tune. And when we run this now, we're going to get this file ID. And on the next script, we're going to use that file ID and we're going to paste it in here, training file ID, right? And here is an important part. This is kind of what model you want to fine tune. So I'm picking like the newest 3.5 turbo version here. Uh, if you have other things, you maybe want to pick another model to fine tune. You just adjust that here in the model name, right? And yeah, I think we're just ready to upload this and get our ID. And then we can move on to the second script. And after that, we can kind of move on to this uh, OpenAI fine-tuning interface they created so we can kind of follow along how our fine-tuning is going so yeah i think we're just gonna run these two scripts now and yeah uh, complete our fine-tuning okay so let's just run it okay file upload is successful good now let's copy this uh, file id here and go back to our script here let's fill in the file id Right, okay, and now we can actually create the fine-tuning job. Okay, so let's run it. And now let's go over to the interface here. You can see we have started the fine-tuning job here. That's good. Uh, let me turn off this dark mode so we can see better. Uh, okay, so I think we're just going to let this run. You can kind of see... We have three epochs, here is the date and stuff, it's validating the files. And yeah, you can kind of see the metrics here, so I'm just going to let this run and we can kind of watch how this develops over time now. Okay, and that was the fine tuning job complete, you can see we completed 78 steps, we trained 19,800 tokens. Uh, we gotta remember 26 examples, that not, that's not much, right? Uh, you kinda need a lot more if you have some very specific thing you need to do, but this is just for this video. So what I did is I took a screenshot of this, I went over to GPT-4 here, I uploaded this and I just asked, can you explain these results? And yeah, you can see training loss, this is a crucial metric. The training loss is a numerical value that represents how well the model is performing. The lower number, the better model is predicting the next token in a sequence. Here the loss was uh, 1, 0.12, suggests that the model has achieved a good level of accuracy. And you can kind of see the graph shows loss over each step of the training, starts higher, trends downwards, which is ideal. That means that the model is improving, making fewer mistakes as it learns. Uh, the loss seems to step stabilize, which generally means that the model has learned as much as it can from this data. So, we don't have a big data set here, so... Yeah, it kind of learned everything it could. It even went to zero, so... There was nothing more 
to extract from this fine tuning job. So what is left now is just to test it and see if, yeah, it worked. To test this now, we're just gonna go to the playground. You can go to models here, right? And we're gonna scroll down. You can see fine tunes. I have a lot of bad fine tuned models here, but all the way down here, you can find our latest fine tune, right? Okay, so let us select that. Let's set the temperature to zero. Yeah, let's set the length to, it doesn't matter. I went to Wikipedia, I just found a, a sci-fi novel here, Snow Crash, Neil Stevenson. So let's copy some text from Wikipedia and add a message. Okay, so remember we gotta end it with uh, response, right? Response. And let's test it. Yeah. Good, good, good. So we got the title, the author, the year, and uh, science fiction. That's the genre. Uh, let's grab, I found also something about Dune here. That's another novel. Uh, okay, so let's reload this. Uh, yeah, that's a good model. Let's try it at 0.5. Increase the length of it. Paste in the wiki. Response, right? Yeah, Dune, Frank Herbert, 1965, science fiction, so you can copy this, we can go to like a spreadsheet here, you can paste it in, data, split, and yeah, here's our input. So, perfect, I think it's working, but again, this was a very simple example, right? But imagine like you need a very structured, big schema that has a lot of variables. Uh, I think you can get a lot of this out uh, by fine-tuning this model because we only get this out, right? But you always gotta remember to put in like the response here part here, that's important. Let's see what happens if we don't put in response here. Okay, Dune Frank Herbert. Science fiction. <laughs> it's trying. Okay, Dune Frank Herbert. It got it at the end. But it would be much more stable if we always add response here at the end. Right, because that it was trained from, from the, from the. If we go to our data sets here, you can kind of see. It always had response here, right? So that's important to remember. But yeah, I think this is just gonna conclude this, and the conclusion is this works great if you have a specific task, as we talk about in the intro, or we have some other variables that kind of fits fine tuning. And yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Also trying to fine tune other models, open source models going forward. Small large, lang small, large language, small language models. That's also going to be interesting like Phi 2 and stuff. But I think we're just going to wrap it up here. And of course I'm going to cover the other topics in another video. Hope you learned something. And again, if you want to support me and get the codes and stuff, just go to the link in the description below and become a member. It doesn't matter what tier you pick, that's up to you. But yeah, thank you for tuning in, have a great day, and I'll see you on Wednesday.